Hey everyone, Luna here. Welcome to my three-part video series on Lady Olander. This is video one of three, and I will be covering painting her up. Stay tuned for the other parts, and make sure to like and subscribe for more miniature reviews and painting tips. After basing Lady Olander in Corax White, I'm going to be applying the Technical Paint Night Haunt Gloom to majority of her dress, stopping at where the details are, so that way when I do the shades and the layer paints, it will add a little bit of a different color up there, and it will look different from the rest of the model. Now, you can apply as many layers of this as you want. I usually do about one to two layers depending on how I want it to look. This part was really hard to capture on film, but I am painting her staff in copper and putting a layer of uh, Nihilus Oxide on it to give it an oxidized copper look, which is one of my favorite looks, especially for Night Haunt units. It just makes it look old and it makes it look like they brought it out of the earth with them when they came out of it. The gem itself, I'm gonna be trying to do a dark blue look on. And honestly, uh, you can do whatever you want with that. That is the nice thing about that gemstone is you can kind of just make it whatever color you want. Now, I am going to be putting my white scar layer paint on a wet palette to make it even thinner. This is so it looks streaky, and I really like the streaky look on these models because, again, it just makes them look very ghost like. And, pro tip if you're wanting to put Citadel paints on a wet palette, use a toothpick. It is it's just easy, just scoop it out and then just smear it on that wet palette. Now, when applying the white scar layer to Lady Olander, I like to go thin to thick. So I like to start towards where I want my end to be and where I want to do my wet blending. I like to do very thin, thin layers. I really stretch out that paint because that's where I'm going to be wet blending. And then I add about an additional layer or two to the top of her dress where I want it to be more solid. Now this is some place where you can really customize your mini. You can do less layering, more layering, or only do one thin layer. It is really up to you. And the Night Haunt Gloom, especially on the thinner layers, will actually still show through and have a really cool effect to it as well. Now here I am wet blending. I want to make sure my paint is on a wet palette and I'm adding more water from my cup to the paint to make it really thin. I almost want it to be like a watercolor and I'm going to just blend it at the bottom and really thin it out and make it very milky, almost like a wash. I want it to be thin and I want it to blend into the night haunt gloom at the bottom. Now, when, especially when applying your washes, this is going to have a really cool effect in wet blending on especially Night Haunt models. just looks really, really nice. Now comes one of my favorite times. I'm going to be applying the wash. Now I chose a purple wash this time because I decided I didn't want a traditional blue one because I already have a traditional blue Olander. So the purple I apply in two layers. I first apply a thin layer, see how it looks, and then apply a second layer. Usually my second layer is a lot heavier and I emphasize heavier washing on certain parts of the mini. This is up to you. You can use whatever color you want on them. I find that Night Haunt units tend to look really nice in either blue, purple, or green. Now, one thing I do like about the purple wash, especially over the Night Haunt Gloom, it has this really watercolor look to it, a very like vintage fade look. And I just cannot get over how incredibly cool it looks. And I really, really emphasize and recommend doing this purple wash over Night Haunt Gloom for your models if you really want a cool and unique look to your model that isn't very traditional, but still looks very ethereal. Next comes edge highlighting. I'm using a purple ink to do her edge highlighting, and I can't emphasize enough that you really need to edge highlight your Night Haunt models. It makes them look a lot more ethereal, and very ghostly, and it just adds to the model a lot. Now, the dark purple I'm using is just really emphasizing her edges, and it just, with the purple wash, 
looks really, really nice again. I just cannot get over how amazing she looks painted up in purple. And as I painted her, I just was wowed by every single moment, everything I did, everything I added. It just looked so cool and so ghostly and very, very unique. I'm gonna be using contrast paints on the kind of hair layer of the model. Now, contrast paints are some of my favorite paints to use because depending on how many layers you use, your paint is either gonna be more of a brilliant color or more of a dull color. I'm using black and gray in this to add some contrast, and I'm also kind of not being consistent with the two layers I'm putting on. So that way it just has more of an uneven look and it really emphasizes the fact that she's a ghost. You know, not all of her is solid, some of it's transparent. And this inconsistent paint, it just looks really, really nice. It really adds to the model and I just absolutely love it. Now, I want to add a little something real quick while I'm cluing her hair layer to the rest of the model. Make sure you hold it in place. The layers will like to tend to droop and it will cause the rest of the layers that go on top not to glue to the model correctly. So make sure to watch out for that. 